What is going on guys, it is Panjano here and today I'm going to bring you guys the ultimate FPS increase guide for Rust with inside of 2019. This guide is here to allow you guys to achieve the very best performance possible on your PC regardless of your system specs. Whether you guys are running on an ultra low end potato laptop all the way up to the latest and greatest in gaming hardware, this video is going to be overhauling all of the previous steps in which I've shown off in previous Rust FPS guides so for you guys who haven't seen any of my previous videos or if you've watched all of them make sure that you stick around for this video as most of the steps will be rewritten especially with the latest Windows update. There are many more optimizations to apply and plenty of gains to be had. As always guys, if you guys do enjoy this video, please do leave a like on the video as helps me out tremendously. Alongside leaving any results, questions, queries or suggestions down in that comment section down below as it is always fantastic to hear from you guys. And if you guys do enjoy content like this, please do consider pressing the subscription button alongside the bell notification to be notified instantly of when I upload, updated videos for Rust, other tutorials or community suggested content. So jumping straight on into the guide, first and foremost, what we're going to be doing is ensuring that we're running on the latest version of Windows as the May 2019 Windows update has just released. This is incredibly important to update to and it's highly recommended if any of you guys are running on high-end multi-core CPUs alongside any Ryzen CPU on the market. This is free and easy to do for every single person watching the video and to check if you're on the latest version of Windows or not or if you need to update you can simply take yourself down into the bottom left hand side and type in winver just like so and press enter. Once you guys have done that we're looking for build version 1903. If the number is higher than this that means that you're on a newer version of Windows and that's absolutely fine but you want to make sure that you're not running on a version of Windows older than 1903. You can then go ahead and press OK. For any of you guys out there who are running on a Windows version older than 1903, you can navigate down into the description down below and you'll find the link for the Windows 10 May update. Once you're on the download Windows 10 page, simply take yourself to the Windows 10 May update found here, click the update now button, download the upgrade installer, open up the program and it'll get you up and running on the latest version of Windows. Simply then restart your PC, come back to this video and continue on with the rest of the steps. Assuming that around about 99% of people watching this video currently have either already updated or have just updated to the latest version of Windows, a lot of the optimizations in which you've applied to Windows itself would have been reset. So we're going to be going through a lot of those with inside of this video as well, ensuring that you guys are getting the very best FPS with inside of Rust and practically every game you play. To start off, what you guys will need to do is navigate into the description down below and find the download for the FPS increase pack for Rust 2019. If the first link doesn't work, try out the second link, just simply download the file and place it onto your desktop. At this point, what we're going to do is right click on the file and select the option for extract here. If you don't have the option for extract here, you'll need to take yourself over to Google and either search for WinRAR or 7-Zip. Just download one of those programs, you don't need both. Then come back to the file, right click and you should have the option to extract here. Once you guys have extracted here, you'll then be given a folder in your desktop with an identical name. Inside of there, you'll then be met with configs, optimizations, command and launch options. These are going to be the folders and files we're going to be going through throughout this video to ensure that we're getting the very best FPS possible. So to kick things off, what we're going to be doing is navigating into the FPS pack provided and navigating inside of the configs folder. But inside of here, you're then going to be met with four different config folders. You're going to be met with high end, low end competitive, recommended competitive and ultra low end. For any of you guys running on potato PCs, it's recommended you go with the ultra low end config. For the competitive configs, these are basically configs which enable some of the visual candy but are more tailored towards FPS and getting the advantage with inside of the wasteland rather than adding tons of different visual techniques which enhance the game's graphics. So the competitive configs are mainly for you guys out there who like a decent looking game but prefer FPS and performance rather than a stuttery good looking mess. But for any of you guys who want the best of both worlds, the high-end config is there as well. So at this point, you'll make a decision as to which config you wish to install. I'm going to be personally installing the recommended competitive config. So what you'll do is you'll go into the folder for the config you're going to install, and you'll be met with the client CFG file found here. What we're simply going to be doing is just dragging this folder over to the right-hand side, and we're then going to navigate down into Steam. Then going to proceed to go over to Rust, right-click, select Properties, Go over to local files found here at the top and hit browse local files. At this point you'll then be brought inside of the game installation directory. What we're then going to be doing is heading inside of the CFG folder with inside of here and you'll be met with client, keys and keys default. We're then going to go back over to the right hand side to the config we've found inside of the FPS increase pack, drag this into our game directory and replace the file with inside of this destination. At this point you've now successfully installed your optimized game config files and we can exit out of both of those folders. Proceeding on from there what we can now go ahead and do is actually set up the launch options for the game. These haven't changed much since last time as I've gone ahead and tested them and just slightly Slightly adjusted them so they are going to be similar to my last FPS increase guide but they are the very best launch options for the game as of the latest updates. So to install these we're going to be going back inside of the FPS increase pack, going inside of the launch options text document and double clicking. With inside of here you'll have to set up the launch options, it's very simple and easy to do but you'll have to tailor them to your system specs. Then take yourself down to the bottom to your taskbar, right click and select task manager. With inside of task manager we're then going to be navigating over to the performance tab found here at the top, then clicking on CPU and navigating down to the bottom right hand side and we're looking for cores and logical processors. So what we're going to be doing is taking ourselves over to CPU count found here at the top. For the CPU count, we're going to be setting this to the core count found within inside of Task Manager. So for me, I have cores 8, so I'm going to set CPU count to 8. We're then going to be navigating over to XS Threads or EX Threads, and again, this number found here is going to be the amount of logical processors within inside of Task Manager. 
So for me, this is also eight, but your number may differ. So I'm also gonna be coming up here and setting eight. Last but not least, we need to set up the amount of system RAM we have and the correct number for this. You can find this down in the bottom of the launch options text document. It gives you a brief explanation as to what you should be setting. So if you have eight gig of RAM, copy this number here and paste it to where max mem is. Just simply paste in 6194. If you have 16 gigabytes of RAM, which most of you probably do, we're gonna be copying in 14,000. Simply highlight the number. Control and V. Once you guys have done that, you've now successfully set up your customized launch options. What we're then gonna do is drag all the way from the right-hand side to the left-hand side, just like so, right-click and select copy. We can then go ahead and exit out. At this point, what we're then gonna be doing is navigating back inside of Steam, going over to Rust again, right-clicking and selecting properties. With inside of here, this time we're gonna be going over to set launch options, go into the blank text box. If the text box isn't blank and you already have launch options in here, just remove everything inside of here, then go ahead and right-click and hit paste. We can then go ahead and press OK. And before we exit out of the Rust properties, there's a few more optimizations we can apply whilst inside of here. If you guys don't use the Steam overlay whilst in the game very often, it's highly recommended that you turn this off. For another important optimization, we can then navigate down to the Steam input per game setting, go into the drop down menu and set this to forced off. Once you guys have done that, we can then go ahead and hit close. Proceeding on from there, what we can now go ahead and do is actually apply some EXE fixes to the Rust application itself to ensure that it's running the best with inside of Windows at the right priority modes. This might sound a little bit complicated, but it's actually very simple and effective to do. So to start off, what we're gonna be doing is actually navigating back inside of Steam, right-clicking on Rust once again, and navigating to Properties. Again, what we're gonna be doing is navigating to Local Files at the top and hitting Browse Local Files. Once again, bringing us into the Game Installation Directory. This time with inside of the Game Directory, what we're gonna be doing is going over to where it says Rust, finding the Rust application, right-clicking, and then selecting Properties. With inside of here, we're then gonna be going over to the Compatibility tab found here. Then what we're gonna be doing is checking the options for Disable Full Screen Optimizations, selecting Change High DPI, and also overriding the High DPI Scaling Behavior, pressing OK, Apply, and OK. We're gonna repeat that step for the Rust Client EXE found with inside of here as well. So right click, Properties, Compatibility, Disable, then Override, OK, Apply, and OK. We can then go ahead and exit out of the game installation directory. Piggybacking off of that optimization, we can now go ahead and complement it by going inside of the FPS increase pack, heading inside of the optimizations folder, and going with inside of the Rust process manager folder found with inside of here. Inside of here, you'll then be met with three keys, Rust above normal priority, high priority, and normal priority. These keys here will allow you guys to set the priority mode with inside of Rust every time it boots with inside of Windows. For instance, if you click on Rust high priority, the game will always boot into high priority mode, allowing Windows to allocate more resources towards the game application rather than other programs which might be open in the background. 90% of you guys watching this video will find the best results by going with high priority, but if you're on a lower end system and you are experiencing some stuttering, above normal priority might work better. But for most of you watching, double click on high priority. You'll then be met with this warning found here, just simply go ahead and press OK. Registry Editor will then notify you that everything has been successfully changed and then press OK once again, and that optimization has now been completed. Proceeding on from there, what we can now go ahead and do is actually navigate into Steam once again and actually go into Rust and boot into the game. At this point, you can have a stay at the main menu or you can actually go into the game settings menu. And what we're gonna be doing is actually going through the individual game settings for the recommended system specs. You'll see these on screen now as they'll be coming up. Just simply pause the video on the recommended system spec you have. So for the high-end game settings, you'll see high. You'll also be seeing low-end game settings, medium end. So just pause the video on what best matches your system them specs and copy those settings with inside of there for the best results. Of course you can come in and fine tune them, you can turn some settings up depending on if you want it on or not, but for my recommended values for all system specs they'll be on the screen now. Proceeding on from there what we can now go ahead and do is actually start off by applying some Windows optimizations and again this is incredibly important as we've just updated Windows. For everyone watching this video if you've applied this optimization before you will have to do it again. So to start off what we're going to be doing is navigating to the bottom left hand side and typing in power plan just like so. Once you guys have typed that in, then go ahead and select the option for Edit Power Plan. And once that's opened up, we can then go ahead to the Power Options tab found here at the top. And with inside of here, you'll then want to go to the Show Additional Power Plans menu found with inside of here. With inside of here, we're then going to be looking for the Ultimate Performance Power Plan. If you guys don't have the Ultimate Performance Power Plan with inside of here, it's actually a secret power plan in which you can enable with inside of any Windows 10 PC. It's highly recommended and it's one of the most important optimizations with inside of this video. So if you don't have the Ultimate Performance Power Plan, simply go ahead and minimize this screen and we can then go into the FPS Increase Pack provided. With inside of the FPS Increase Pack, go over to the Command Text Document and double click. With inside of here, what we're then going to be doing is getting this code found here, going all the way from the right to the left and copying everything with inside of here. You can then go ahead and exit out of the notepad then navigate down to the bottom left hand side and type in cmd just like so. Now this is incredibly important, make sure before you boot the command prompt that you right click and run this as an administrator. If you don't run command prompt as an administrator, this command will not be recognized and nothing will happen. Once you guys have done that, then simply go ahead and press Control and then V, which will then paste the code in and press Enter. Once you guys have pressed Enter, you'll then be met with Power Scheme, GUID, Ultimate Performance, and we can go ahead and exit out of the command prompt. We can then navigate back inside of the Power Options, in which we minimized earlier, 
Go to the refresh button and with inside of here you'll then be met with ultimate performance power plan just simply go over to it and just highlight it just like so make sure that it's enabled and we can then go ahead and exit out of the power plan proceeding on from there and piggybacking off of that step to further optimize our power plan what we can go ahead and do is actually navigate into the fps increase pack provided once again going inside of the optimizations folder navigating down to quick cpu setup version 3010 and double clicking with inside of here and at the bottom side of the screen now you'll see a quick explanation as to what this program does and how it benefits you for any of you guys who have watched my previous videos this is a more advanced version of a program which I used to recommend and this is probably the second most important optimization throughout this entire video. So go ahead and press next, accept the terms, select next, next and install. After a few moments the program will be installed, go down to the launch option, make sure that's checked and then press finish. After a few short moments the program will then open up. To start off what we're going to be doing is going over to power data, going to the drop down menu and selecting ultimate performance. Once you guys have done that we're then going to navigate to the bottom left hand side, go to core parking index and drag this up to 100%, allowing Windows to use 100% of the CPU cores as and when it needs to. We can then go to frequency scaling which is going to be the speed and again drag this to 100%. And last but not least for some of you guys watching this video you'll have this option available. If you don't, don't panic but if you do have it, go to turbo boost index and again set this to 100%. What we can then go ahead and do is press the apply button in the bottom right hand side. It will then notify you that changes have successfully been applied. Press OK and we can then exit out so optimization has now been completed. Proceeding on from there, we can then continue on with our last and final power plan optimization to Windows. And again, this is incredibly important, so make sure that you do this. And if you have applied this in previous videos of mine, you will have to reapply it now as the latest Windows update would have reset this back to default. Never get into the bottom left hand side, and what we're going to be doing is typing in reg edit just like so, and then pressing OK. Once you guys are inside of here, the registry editor for Windows will then open up. This can look quite intimidating, but it's actually very simple and easy to follow along with. Just take your time, and it's completely fine. We can start off by going into H key local machine and double clicking, then navigating down to software and double clicking. Now at any point if you do get lost with inside of the registry editor just look at this point on my screen now to the computer HQ local machine This is the directory in which we're inside of this will continue to get bigger and bigger as we go deeper and deeper And as long as yours matches up with this you're in the right location and there's nothing to worry about Once you're inside of the software folder we're then going to scroll all the way down to the M section We're looking for Microsoft go inside of Microsoft Scroll all the way down to the W section this time and we're looking for Windows NT inside of Windows NT double click then go inside of the current version folder and double click again. On the side of here we're then going to scroll down to the M section once again and we're looking for the multimedia folder. Go inside of multimedia, go inside of system profile and click on system profile just once. With inside of here what we're then going to be doing is navigating over to the right hand side of the screen and going over to where it says system responsiveness. Double click on the system responsiveness key and we're going to be changing this value. We're going to be setting the value of zero if you guys are running on a relatively high end or new gaming PC. If you can run most modern titles and you've got around about 16 gig of RAM, set this to a system responsiveness of zero. For any of you guys out there who are running on sort of medium end to lower end systems, you'll set this value to one. I'm going to be going with zero, assuming I'm recording this on my high end gaming PC, then go ahead and press OK. We can then go back into system profile found here on the left hand side and double click. Go inside of tasks, then go down to games, and on the right hand side we're going to be changing four options. We're going to start off by going over to GPU priority and setting the value data to 8. Then going ahead and pressing OK. Then going over to priority this time and setting the value data of 6. Going over to scheduling category, setting the value data of high which is going to be HIGH, and then press OK. And last but not least, the SFIO priority, double clicking, and setting the value data of HIGH once again. Once those four options have then been changed, you can then simply go ahead and exit out of the registry editor as those optimizations have now been completed. Proceeding on from there, that now brings us onto some very important quick hot fixes in which we can apply to a lot of applications or settings within inside of Windows, which will help improve our stuttering for pretty much every single machine. Regardless of your system specs, make sure that you follow along with these following steps. To start off with these, we're going to be looking at any of you guys out there who use Discord. So to start off, what we're going to be doing is opening up Discord, navigating to the bottom left hand side to your user tab and going to user settings. With inside of here we're then going to be navigating on the left hand side all the way down to the appearance tab. With inside of the appearance tab scroll all the way down to the bottom then we're going to be looking for the option titled hardware acceleration. Go over to the flicker switch if this is turned to the on position and switch this to off. You'll then be met with this warning, go ahead and press OK. Discord will then automatically restart and hardware acceleration will be disabled. This stops Discord from being able to use your GPU to accelerate the performance in which we do not want. Now that we're running on the latest GPU driver, simply take yourself into the FPS pack provided once again, go inside of the optimizations folder, and then go inside of the GPU settings folder. With inside of here, you'll be finding six screenshots, you'll be finding three for NVIDIA and three for AMD. These screenshots will give you guys the best settings for your control panels, in which you can access by going to your desktop, right clicking and either opening the NVIDIA control panel or the AMD Radeon settings panel. With inside of there, the screenshots will show you clearly which settings you should be setting for the best performance for your PC. 
Just simply follow those, go inside of that folder, follow the screenshots, and we can continue on. Following on from that step, for any of you guys running on an NVIDIA graphics card, you guys can also apply another optimization quickly. If you guys are running on an AMD card, skip around about a minute past this point in the video. But for everyone watching with an NVIDIA graphics card, simply double click on the NVIDIA profile inspector with inside of the FPS increase pack. With inside of here, we're then going to go to the left hand side and find number two under sync and refresh and find the option for frame rate limiter mode. Double click on the option to allow it to become editable. Go to the drop down menu and we're going to be selecting the option for 0x004 PS frame rate limiter to control delay flip by flip. As long as the number 4 is at the end of the 0x000, you should be completely good to go. Once it's then been set, take yourself up to the top right hand side and apply those changes and we can then exit out. So proceeding on from there, seeing we're at this point in the video, what it's best to do is before we continue on with the last and final step is to take ourselves to the bottom left hand side, click on the windows button, right click on the power option and select restart. Restart your machine, come back to this video, open up Steam and get ready to continue on with the last and final step. It points to me that we've now done all of the shown optimizations, there's one last thing left to do. That's to navigate down into Steam, head over to Rust and hit play. And there you guys have it, my ultimate FPS increase guide for Rust with inside of 2019, more specifically the second half of 2019. If you guys are happy with the results of this video and enjoyed watching, please do leave a like on the video as it helps me out tremendously, alongside leaving your results, questions, queries, or suggestions for other content in that comment section down below, alongside any other tweaks or optimizations you guys might have found, as it's always fantastic to get a discussion going on down in the comments. If you guys do enjoy content like this, please do consider pressing the subscription button, alongside the bell notification to be notified instantly of when I upload, whether that's for new games, updates for Rust, or other other community suggested content. Thank you ever so much for taking the time to watch this video. I've been Pangino and I'll see you in the next one.